Welcome back to Artificial Antics, where Rico and Mike will talk about the implications and opportunities around artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. In today's episode, Moving the Needle with Stable Diffusion, Mike and Rico will explain how they overcame a previous challenge with AI, making consistent characters. What's up, everybody? It's Rico from Artificial Antics here with another exciting episode. Tonight, we got a lot of ground to cover, so we're not going to do much with the news. Uh, you can look for it in a new project we have that Mike's going to explain to you here in a moment. But we're going to get into stable diffusion. And if you know, uh, if you've been with us for a little while, uh, we covered a while a while back our children's book and series that we're working on with Lily in the Kindness Kingdom. And one of the issues we had run into was character continuity uh, with uh, generative art. And we'd like to create our characters and obviously have the same character carry through in the book uh, throughout. You know, you don't want to see the character change over time. Uh, so we had used Mid Journey. We tried Bing AI and ran into a, a series of issues with that. And uh, recently, Mike had come across Stable Diffusion and was able to install that and kind of toy around with it. And that's what we're going to be showing you tonight on how to create character continuity uh, and also create some really neat things with generative art. But we have another big project we're very excited to talk about that was just introduced this week. I'm going to let Mike talk about that a little bit. So, Mike, why don't you tell the folks what we've been doing? Yeah, absolutely, Rico. Uh, hey, folks, really great to see everybody here back in the lab. Like, I'm fired up tonight. I'm super excited <laughs> because there are two things. One, Stable Diffusion has been pretty amazing. Like, I'm, I'm using it on my computer now. Uh, so, for one, I don't have to pay for anything except for electricity. For <laughs> two, uh, you know, I can kind of let things generate overnight, which I can't really do that in, like, mid-journey and these other things. So, if I want to generate 100 images, you can, like, run that overnight and do it on my computer at, at its leisure, right? So, but our other big project, which Rico kind of hinted at, is we have launched a newsletter. This is the AI Bytes newsletter. Uh, we're going to be doing this on a weekly basis. So, uh, this will be something that you can subscribe to to keep up with all of the uh, developments in AI. You don't want to miss anything. And I, I know that like most people don't have time to like just be trolling LinkedIn all day. They need to do their jobs. And so uh, what this allows you to do is to never miss any important AI news. So we'll be aggregating uh, some different articles and we're going to be heavily curating. This isn't like throwing some stuff in chat GPT and spitting it out and you get this generic robotic sounding thing. This is right. truly from the heart of Rico and I, the heart and mind of Rico and I. And uh, we're, we're excited to share this with you folks because being able to capture all of this in one shot and just, you know, receive a message every week is is really beneficial and allows you to uh, to really not miss anything. The other thing is, you know, we do the news on our shows normally with the exception of today, just because we have a lot to cover with Stable Diffusion. But, you know, those news segments, we're going to also always be including a segment in text about those in these newsletters. So like you'll you'll never miss the most up-to-date news if you're subscribed. So subscribing is just as easy as going to antics.tv. That's the website for this podcast. And there is right below the video, there's a uh, sign up for our newsletter. It's You'll see it. There's a pink button that says subscribe. Uh, go ahead and enter your email address in there. Hit subscribe. We're never going to sell your email address. We're never going to spam you. Again, this is once weekly. Uh, we love you all and we treat you like family and I don't spam my family. So that's right. Uh, yeah, re real excited. So Rico, uh, I think you got into the problem space that we're going to be working with tonight. And now I'm yep. going to go ahead and share my screen and get right into it with stable diffusion and what's called the uh, focus or focus model with Stable Diffusion, there are a bunch of different models that are optimized for uh, for different functionality, right? Like there's some models that are really good at photorealism. There are other models that are good at, you know, uh, let's say cartoon art, right? And then there are some mm -hmm. that kind of do a wide variety of like everything across the board. And uh, and then they have some uh, some tuning, right, for like certain photorealism and whatnot. So that is the one that we're going to use is, is one of those where I can generate a bunch of different art styles. But we um, we also have the ability to use uh, these really finely tuned models 
to generate photorealistic stuff. And those are called uh, the the package that I'm using, Rico, is called Focus. So with like okay. Foo Kiss, it's like F O O O O. Yeah, exactly. C U S. And uh, and we'll have all of this linked in the show notes. We're gonna have a a follow up where you can actually learn to install this on your computer. But I just kind of wanted to let folks know uh, what we're using. And here's the spelling, right? Just so you know, like it's it's F O O O C U S. And so these are the these are the models, Rico, that are really good for like photorealistic pictures, right? So those are the realistic models. But we have the so we have the realistic models here. But we also have like a bunch of different art stuff right and rico Mm -hmm. i showed you some of these the other day right like we had like renaissance art and um you know there's futuristic stuff there's cyberpunk there's cartoon there was there was paper mache there was uh, um sketch pad right yeah exactly um there was heroic stuff right where you could have uh you know draw yourself as a superhero right and these were awesome these work very, very well. I mean, I was like surprised how great these are. Um, but, you know, with our specific challenge, what we wanted to do is really just generate a consistent character. And what we had started with, right, is we started with something called Mid Journey. Uh, I think a lot of people have heard about Mid Journey already. And I think that our prompt for this was something to the effect of, you know, um, a story, a cover of a storybook, a kid's storybook mm-hmm. um, about Lily and the kindness kingdom where you know she helps some animals you know and learns about kindness and and uh you know is better along the way right and uh it was pretty basic like it might have been even half of those words right but that was what it was and it generated this as a starting point and we were like oh my gosh like this is so cool right like (laughs) like, look at it right it's like that's cool that's lily like we had this picture in our head and then we're like, oh, cool. All right. Well, and you were like, all right. So the first scene is like Lily's helping this like fox, right? And I'm like, all right, right let's generate a, you know, Lily helping a fox in the woods. And like what happened was when we did those, they, the the pictures came out completely different, right? Like yep. no we, continuity character. No, no continuity at all whatsoever, right? right? And so, and we tried for, a couple hours, right? Like we tried using uh, what what are called seed values, right? Like right. to kind of find the the value of the seed that would have been generated that type of art. And so, I mean, that there's like fifty thousand. It's like one through fifty thousand or something, right? So there are a lot of values <laughs> right. in there. We tried some ranges because they kind of do follow a, a pattern along the ranges. So we tried like one, then we tried like uh, a thousand, 10, then we tried like ten thousand, then fifteen, you know, and none of it. Like some of it came close, but nothing hit the mark, right? And, you know, here she's like way older. This is more photorealistic, right? So, um, you know, really we scrapped the project for quite some time, right? And so I happened to be just on YouTube looking at AI stuff. And, you know, I had also watched some other videos on making, you know, um, you know, consistent characters through mid journey. It didn't work nearly as well as what, you know, we're, we're going to show you here. Right. Um, right. And so and so with, you know, the character creation, uh, we, we were sort of just stalled out. I said, OK, well, if I can't do it right, I'm just not right now. I'm not going to do it. Right. And so um, I was looking and, uh, you know, funny enough, somebody had made like an AI influencer. Right. And so they had to have consistent new pictures of that person. And so I was right. like, oh, well, this seems like kind of promising. Right. And so I went through the video. It was like, you know, 10, 15 minute video. It wasn't really difficult. Um, most of it was just, hey, install this package. Right. And then once you have this package, you start this you know, web server on your computer, which is uh, not as scary as it sounds, to be quite honest. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, it's, it's really just make, you know, start your own website. So instead of on the web, this is hosted on Mike's Mike's computer, literally on my computer. Right. And so. Um, so, you know, you look here, this could be a little bit intimidating. There's tons of stuff, right? Like, oh my gosh, like sliders and all this stuff. And you haven't even seen like, there's more, right? Like there's like, you dig in, there's so many little settings, but here's the deal to do what we're going to do. It really doesn't take all that much. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Right? So the first thing you need to do is, you know, you're, I'm just going to go back to this page. So this is exactly what you're going to land on, right? When you get to this page. The first thing mm-hmm. that I do now 
is I, I, I check input image because you're going to want an input image to make consistent characters. It needs something to base the images off of, right? So you're going to need that. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need the advanced because you're going to want to tweak things like the performance. And I'll show you kind of my iterative style here because this is really important to save you a ton of time, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with, so it'll be defaulted to upscale or variation. We don't want to do that in this case. We want to do an image prompt. And then we're going to select, uh, you know, Lily's face here. Now, one of the cool things that you may have noticed is that Lily here, um, you know, has this big background with all these blues, the clouds and everything. But then, you know, we come back over here, it, it's like it's transparent, right? Well, that I didn't go through in Photoshop and, you know, go around and cut out all those pixels. I actually used another AI tool, funny enough, although you can do this in Photoshop, by the way, for free. Um, but if you don't have Photoshop, you can actually use something called remove.bg. And it's pretty much exactly what it implies. It's removing the background from an image. So what you could do is you can take the image of Lily and uh, let me go find the image here. Okay, so we'll take we'll take uh, this image, right? Because this is just her hat. And to let you know, with con creating the consistent characters, it's mostly just all about the face, right? So we're going to use uh, a, you know kind of a methodology called face swap, and uh, and you probably have heard of face swap just overall because a lot of applications exist to do that face swap thing, right? So now that we see how we've removed the background here, you see this checkered, that means that there's no background there. We could just hit download. I'm not gonna do that because I already downloaded this image. And uh, and and so a couple quick notes, you could pay for this service. I wouldn't, I'd actually pay for, um, I think Canva does this, right? And I know mm -hmm. Photoshop does it. I would just pay for whatever other service that just you know has this as a feature. Runway ML right. also has this, right? Like you can get this so many places. Places. This is just a really nice free one that I can do like all the time. It's like easier than opening Photoshop to be quite frank with you, right? So now, very important thing. We're not just going to use Lily's face as the image prompt. That wouldn't actually net us a very good effect. We can, mm -hmm. I could show you what that'll do. Um, so we can say, uh, girl in the forest with a campfire. So we'll, we'll just start real simple. Now, here's the key, folks. Um, what I like to do when I start a new prompt, which is the text here, and a new set of inputs, is I like to kind of get an idea. It's just like being in a science lab. You want to kind of generate a bunch of what could be crappy content very quickly to see if it's going to at least get the general idea of what you're putting in this prompt, right? And then and then from there, you can refine the quality, which is where we get into, hey, you know, uh, performance of speed or generally I go from extreme speed to quality. We're going to generate like 10 images. And by the way, this image number slider does exactly what it implies. That's nine. I'm going to move it over one more. <laughs> so we'll generate 10 images, right? And uh, we'll just hit generate. Oh, I, I, I said I was going to do it uh, and I didn't do it. So that's okay. You could stop this at any time, folks. If you messed up, you forgot a step, which I just forgot a step. So this is perfect. Um, you could just stop it. It takes a little bit to stop because it's got to kind of wind this down. But it will stop and it'll give you, when you see the generate button again, which we will in just a minute here, um, we will uh, we'll be able to tweak our settings and then regenerate again. So without, you know, we don't lose everything, all of our settings that we already put in. We're not gonna lose that. Okay, cool. So we're back to where we have the generate button, folks. So I forgot a critical step. I'm kind of glad I forgot it. This was not, this was uh, improvised completely. It was just happenstance, right? So remember how I said, we're gonna start with an image prompt, but we really wanna use face swap. Uh, I just wanted to show you that if you, you know, you're creating consistent characters, we need to switch that over to face swap, right? But I wanted to show you first, right? That um, here's here's how uh, it, it doesn't work, right? Or it won't work as well, which is just using it an image prompt. So I just wanted to at least turn that on and show you. 
Mm -hmm. then we're going to generate these 10 images with the extreme speed. This will probably, you know, extreme speed just means that uh, it's going to be the fastest it can be. Now, Rico and I are on video right now. So the reality is like this is probably going to take even longer than it normally would. But this should be relatively fast. So we're just going to wait for this. So that's the thing, folks. Pretty huge thing. If you want to do this, uh, you need an NVIDIA video card. And I would say you want something like that's at least relatively decent. You're not going to throw this on your laptop probably and, and generate no. a bunch of images. Like I've got a desktop with um, a, what I'm going to call a medium good uh, video card. I've got a 3060 Ti. Uh, that's not too bad. It's not great. It's just not too bad. Uh, and, uh, and so as we could see here, we're generating something that's not consistent right just like we had that problem in mid journey but we figured it out very quickly instead of if we would have clicked this quality this could take like 10 minutes for one image now here's the beauty i already know this isn't going to work i don't need to wait for the other nine images right so i could do a couple things here i could hit the skip button if i want to kind of give myself another try right like so maybe i see this one looks good but maybe the second one didn't look good and i want to just skip it I could do that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit skip. And that will skip the ones that, well, the one that's currently generating and just generate something different, right? And uh, and so we'll let that go. And then we're gonna ha have to hit stop again. See how it skipped it? Now it changed it, started generating a new one. Now I'm gonna hit stop. Okay, so we generated one image, hey, it, di it did exactly what I thought it was going to do, which it did what we asked it to do. And honestly, if you look, Rico, the girl has, you know, kind of a similar color shirt on, um, you know, same color eyes and stuff, same color hair, but that it's just not the same thing, right? Like it's right. clearly not the same thing. And the other thing with this too is, you know, we left it with the standard focus styles which again are really good for photorealism but are not good for what we're doing so the next iteration we're going to do is we're going to try that face swap right we're we're, we're going to see what happens here i um this is kind of uh you know going to be a shot in the dark because i haven't tried face swap with a cartoon character with the focus libraries or models so this will mm -hmm. be interesting to see kind of what it comes up with like will it be more cartoony will it be a mix we'll figure that out here in a minute uh, and again like we are generating at extreme speed we don't want to slow things down we want to figure out if we're going to you know fail fast right and fail forward mm -hmm. and so we want to iterate very quickly that's what you want to do in the beginning and you'll just you'll save yourself honestly it could be hours of time uh, another quick, you know, hack that I will say uh, and tip here. See, this looks a lot more like her, right? Like we'll see in a second, but like that, that's, it's not, oh my gosh, like that, <laughs> that, that's so good, right? But it's more photorealistic because it's using those focus, libra focus libraries. Let's let this generate. Let's let like a couple of these generate while I'm mentioning the other, um, what I'm going to call a little life hack here with this, which is, hey, if you want to generate like, um, 20 images and you want them all to be like that high quality, uh, do yourself a favor and get everything started before you go to bed and you'll wake up to 20 images because right. you don't, you don't want to watch paint dry. And this will be <laughs> like watching paint dry, especially if you're trying to do a bunch of stuff on your computer at the same time. So doing this stuff overnight sort of allows you to, uh, get what your get your desired result without slowing your, uh, your work day down, let's say, or something. Right. And, uh, and so that's something that I, I started right away. I just knew I was like, yeah, this thing's going to eat my GPUs, right? It'll mess up my Zoom videos or whatever, right? It's truly going to like, you know, uh, it's going to impact your computer. So you have to be aware of that and you have to make sure that you're accounting for that, right? And again, so it's generating another one. This is good, right? This is really, really good. But it's not, it's, and I'm going to stop this. It's not exactly what Rico and I are looking for, right? Like, this is a little bit too, like, 3d movie to me right like that's kind of what it looks like so um but it did it did exactly what i thought it would do which is kind of mesh like a cartoon character with a photorealistic setting uh what are your thoughts on this rico 
I think you nailed it with that. It definitely looks like you just kind of face swapped, literally face swapped cartoon face on a real body. So right, right. Not, not exactly our target. Exactly, exactly. So the cool thing is now that things were already kind of spun up and cooking, uh, it stopped very quickly, which is nice. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to uh, a different model, right? And so what I found that worked really well was this art style renaissance uh, with no other settings. And um, I'm interested to see about this focus masterpiece. Uh, let's just generate a couple with, we'll do, we, I think I have it to set to 10. We'll generate like 10 without the, um, with, with just the uh, art style renaissance, see how mm -hmm. that comes out. And then, uh, and then what we can do is we could just add in the focus, uh, sorry, the focus masterpiece or focus masterpiece here. So we'll give that a try. Um, and then like heroic fantasy was another really neat one. And, you know, I think I would try, um, you know, the art style Renaissance with MRE heroic fantasy. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, oh, you know what? I just thought about something too. I think we might get better results here as well. If I put like cartoon art style or something, so I'm going to, I'm going to do that mm -hmm. in a second here because I'm realizing that this kind of looks a little bit photorealistic too. Uh, and, uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll test that out and kind of see what we can do here or okay. test it out or, or use that were pretty cool. Uh, I think I did a, a total of like 10 of the 10 different ones and they were all pretty like they even have Fortnite uh art style in here which is really interesting yeah this is actually very very similar right to the last one it's a little different but like it's it's pretty similar and that was with just to let you know go back to it it was with art style renaissance selected i'm gonna let these keep generating while i'm looking at uh the different uh the different settings here but um but yeah, we definitely want to go with a diff slightly different prompt, which uh, so girl in the forest with a campfire. Um, and I'm just going to say like cartoon art. Uh, I'll actually move that over here. But yeah, see how this gives it kind of like a Renaissance uh, outfit look like this one is, is also Renaissance. But this, you know, it doesn't look quite as uh, authentic as this one over here. So I really I really like that off uh, the uh, the renaissance art style um, i'm looking to see if there was something else that i mixed it with because this is not looking exactly how it came out before so i think i might be missing something what is i might have art? yeah it, it could it could have been the fantasy art it's um a little bit further there's uh, well i see heroic fantasy and mm -hmm. there's the sai fantasy art sai fantasy art yeah I definitely used this and tried it out, and this was really cool. Um, we can uh, we can test this out right now. Do you know what the acronym stands for by chance? Uh, you know what? I looked it up. Why don't you look it up? I don't. I don't know. I don't remember what it was, but I do remember looking it up. And again, folks, like these are the these are the very low quality versions, right? Like when we when we switch this over to quality, I mean, it'll take quite a bit longer. But like you're gonna get like something really really cool here. So. Um, I'm going to try mixing uh, the SAI fantasy art with the art style renaissance and see what we get here. Um, I also tried pixel art too, Rico, which um, I know I showed you some of that stuff. That stuff was pretty neat. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So I'm going to try this. And if this doesn't work, uh, I have another idea. I think I, I think I know what I did. I think I added a second image input. And I added that for the, what, what's called the image prompt, okay? So it was giving me like the face swap of Lily, exactly what I expected consistently. And then it would give me the, um, the art style of the rest of the book cover, right? So, and so this is the combination of fantasy art with art style Renaissance. This is definitely getting closer to like what we wanted, right, Rico? Rico? Right. And I yes. think this, yep. this, this must have been what I was generating where I was just getting all wins, right? Yeah, it's, and, it's getting uh, way closer as yeah, it generates. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and again, this is like the, the, um, the, the low qual version, right? So we'll generate a few of these and kind of get an idea. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, this is, this is coming much closer. Right. Um, and, and the other thing I did here, right. Is I added cartoon art, right. So it's, it's clear that it's cartoon art, it's fantasy art, 
and it's got a Renaissance style to it. So you, you have to play around a little bit, right? Like, I feel like it's like painting or any kind of art, right? There's a bit of experimentation there, right? And, uh, you know, you're probably not going to get it on the first go. So uh, that's the cool thing. Uh, you can do a lot of image generation with uh, with programs like Midjourney or, you know, Runway ML or Leonardo, but they all cost a little bit of money, right? Like, and so this costs nothing. It costs your computer cycle, might be a little electricity, right? So um, it could just save you a ton of money in the long run. And, uh, and so that was one of the reasons why, because I do so much of this that I really wanted to have the ability to just do whatever I wanted to do, right? And this gave me that ability. What are you thinking about these latest generations, Rico? I think the one on the right there is looking pretty good. It's, it's yeah, the one on the left, she's got lo she's got lo she's got longer hair on the left. I think it, it hits the mark less, but uh, looks a bit older too, you mm -hmm, know, for for mm -hmm. the storyline. Yeah, we'll generate like this one, and then maybe one more just to kind of get a good sample, and uh, and then what we could try is what I mentioned, right, which is um to to use the image prompt of like the rest of the picture from lily right like like the the picture where she's like standing there with her book or whatever yeah like you're right look at this like so we have we have this one you're right this she does look a little bit older right we can open this up um we you could also use these arrows here to like to go through your images we only have two generated right now but it shows you the preview over here and you could download this preview. You can use this little download button to download just this image. Or if we want to switch over, we could, you know, download just this image, um, you know. But uh, we did we did pre-generate uh, some images. And I will say that they, they came out pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to bring over, uh, let's see. Hold on one sec. Yep. You good? Okay, cool. Um, so, okay, so here's what I did. It looks like I used just image prompt and we can take a look at those. So these are just image prompt. Again, they're pretty good, right? But like, they're not super consistent, right? Um, then I tried this MRE comic style, which, you know, gave us like this, this more heroine, like shiny, like, you know, type of thing, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, I have the SAE pixel art, which was neat. Like, this is kind of like, uh, you know, 8-bit hero type stuff. Uh, I thought this one was really cool, right? Like Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo style, right? Throwback. And uh, and then uh, we have what I ultimately landed on, right, were these Renaissance ones. And I have the Extreme Generations uh, were these, which they came out pretty good, right? Uh, but, uh, but the ones that really ended up being good, right, were were these ones right and these were the quality settings so we had like this one rico which like blew my mind right like that's mm -hmm. really cool right she's hanging with the owl and uh the owl is one of the characters right and then we, we have you know the sheep that's lost in the field right and then we have like her holding the sheep right like she she brought it back to like the rest of its family so uh and you could see here, right? Like, there's even a consistency with the fields and stuff like that, because I use these images as prompts for the other images, right? Right. So you yep. could really, you could really chain these things together and make some really, really awesome stuff. We also have a lily with the fox, right? Which, again, um, I might not use this exact same one, but it's pretty close. You know, she looks a little older, but like it's mm -hmm. pretty close. So. Um, and then I, and then the other, you know, I have this one too, right? Where I wanted to generate just the owl. He's kind of like in the woods. He's by himself. Now I can tell you this took a while to um, fail at getting uh, a picture of an owl with a broken wing. Like I, I just right. I couldn't, I couldn't make that happen. Right. And so, you know, there is, there is sort of, um, you know, there will be, let's say limitations to this, right? It's not just like anything with AI. Um, none of it is exactly perfect. And, you know, like, just like in life, right? Like if, if you tried to get a, a picture of an owl with a broken wing, you know, try capturing that yourself, right? Where are you going to right. find that? What are the odds of you finding that? And who wants capturing to see it, it on camera. <laughs> and, who want, and who wants to see it, right? And I, I agree. I agree with that, right? So here's another one, right? 
this is really neat. I mean, these, these are these are coming up pretty well. And again, these are like the the uh, the cheap ones, right? They're they're generating. If we weren't on this video call, Rico, these would generate have generated already, right? Like that's, right, yeah. You know, so it's our video call kind of slowing these things down a little bit, right? And um, so let's let's take a look. I'm gonna I'm gonna just see what adding this anime in, uh, in here is going to do. And uh, let's also take, yeah, I don't want to do an image prompt because I have a, I have a feeling what, what will happen is she'll have a book in every image. I did, I did, you know, just as a tip folks, um, if I use that, you know, if I use this image, what's going to happen, she'll have a book in every image that comes out and we don't yeah. want that either. Right. So we right. have to kind of figure out like um, sometimes what you can do is you can, See how she has a book at every end. That was just the the image prompt there. Um, sometimes what you could do is you can kind of find something that you like. Like I could I could use this one as an image prompt with. So I'd use face swap here. I'd use this as an image prompt, right? And so both of those inputs, right, would then come out to a um, you know into the final product, right? And we could try that too. Uh, but first, what I want to do is kind of just go through these really quick. So we have we have some pretty decent generations here. You know, it's definitely that same girl, right? Like she may be a tiny bit older or whatever, mm -hmm. but like it's it's correct, right? And uh, so, all right, so let's go ahead and I'm stopping this. This is going to take a second. And what we did here was I added uh, the anime in here, and we'll see if that makes a difference. I want to see if Rico maybe uh let's see if i can find like cartoon okay oh it's just here right so there's nothing that specifically says cartoon uh we'll try it with with the combination of these three. Oh, miscellaneous fairy tale i feel like that's another one that could be kind of cool her hands on fire there so you mm -hmm. know obviously you know one of the ones i with the owls that i was generating i was generating like her an owl and a campfire rico because you had asked me to generate that and there were so many of them that came out with like the owl on precariously on a log, right. Or something that was on fire. And, uh, <laughs> so I had to, I had to ditch a bunch of them. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. this would be, this would be a cool cover to like a video game or something, right. Where, uh, or she's a, a mage. Yeah. I was gonna say fire bender. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll give it, uh, we'll do another, uh, you know, like another couple, see kind of how it comes out right now. It's not that much different to be honest. Now I, now just let you know, folks, like I don't have fairy tale, like it's not part of this generation. I just have it selected because I want to like add it to the mix for the next generation. All right. So we've got some more generations that happened here. Oh, that one's, that one's actually pretty cool. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. I like the lighting. The second yep. fire is a bit. I love the, I love the second trauma. fire there. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Overachiever. Yes, exactly, exactly. We, um, yeah, hey, uh, yo, dog, I heard you like campfires, so I put a campfire on your campfire so you can burn <laughs> you burn. That is not fire safety. Really. No, no, that is not Smokey fire. would that, not be happy. Smokey would, Smokey would not be happy. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think I said that when I sent you one of those images the other day. I'm just like, bro, this is, this is kind of crazy. Uh, okay, so let's try the fairy tale now. So that, that I'm very interested in that one, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll try. We'll drop anime, and we will just do these three. I want to try this focus uh, masterpiece too. But uh, did you see any here? That you, well, I guess these are all the low qual uh, generations anyway. We don't want to really save any of those. For yeah, the book. none of them really set my soul on fire. Same, same. It's not like I have two campfires going in my soul. So yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, one campfire at a time is the rule for Rico. That's what you told <laughs> me that right. one time. Yeah, one campfire at a time. Yes, yes. Oh, there's even like dark cyberpunk, which uh, I don't know. Fan fans might know that I'm a big cyberpunk fan. So I saw one that was like a uh, bad nightmare. I think I said. Did you see that one? Wow, I want to try bad nightmare, dude. I was kind of curious too uh, as to. Mm -hmm. uh, we're to we're know. we're definitely going to try bad nightmare before we end because I I want to see what Lily looks like in a bad nightmare. Yeah, cubism, dark fantasy, <laughs> doodle art, doodle art. That's pretty dope though, right? Like flat two yeah, I mean, D flat two D art. Um, so many options. That's so great. Yeah, we're we're. I mean, we are shooting for that, right? So I'm gonna throw that in the mix. But yeah, this is this is super exciting, and. Uh, 
Yeah, a lot going on with with AI and advancement right now. Um, you know, we've got uh, Google coming out, like we mentioned earlier, right? We've got Google coming out with a whole bunch of new technology, uh, their new Gemini model, right? Which they're going to be releasing that ultra soon. And, uh, you know, I was looking on, um, heck, I got the tab up even, right? Future tools. And, uh, you know, there's just like, I swear, you know, 20 or 30 new articles every day on this stuff, right, folks? And uh, one of the things that Rico realized, Rico and I realized together is that, like, it's hard to keep up with that, right? And really we, realized, we realized that y'all can't watch, you know, like an hour episode every um, you know, every time we release them. So one of the things that, and we only release them once a month, right? So one of the things that, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've designed for, uh, just that purpose, right. To get you that news faster is we've got a new newsletter, right? And, uh, at the uh, end of the segment here, we'll kind of show you how to get signed up for that. Uh, it's very easy. We're not going to spam you, right? Um, we've talked tentatively about doing like once a week, we'll do an AI wrap up for you, right? So that'll give you a few articles in your mailbox that you can take a look at. And, uh, you know, it will it will always be only the best, right? It's going to be highly curated. So we're not just throwing articles in chat GPT and spitting them out the other side, right? Like we are very mindful about what we develop, right? As far as content. So uh, keep that in mind and we'll show you how to sign up in uh, just a little bit for that as well. Oh, you know what? You know what helped? Uh, hang on. What I did last time was I said shoulder length hair. It actually helped. So we'll start again. And I also put this flat 2D art in. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. It might actually destroy what we're trying to do here, but uh, but it might be great. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look, right? So Rico, what's the most interesting thing that you've seen in AI just recently, right? That maybe we didn't cover on the news. What, what's... Cause we, we put out a lot of like, I'll call them little posts on, you know, things here or there. And you do a quite mm -hmm. a bit of that. So what have you found that like blew you away recently or surprised you? Um, Failed on the shoulder length hair. Boom. That, yeah. That's a tough one, honestly, to, mm -hmm. to, to try to narrow down. I, I look at a lot of stuff and I, I think, I think there's a general theme of, you know, we, we knew everybody was going to, to be competing to find, mm -hmm. to make the next best thing. But I haven't seen anybody go like head and shoulders above anyone else. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. like this stable diffusion, uh, you know, we were very impressed with mid journey and mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. now here I was stable diffusion and I'm, I'm really impressed with what, what this is offering. So that, you know, honestly, the most recent thing that's kind of blown me away is really stable diffusion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I can't think of anything else in the news that I've seen. A lot of people are in, you know, uh, using chat bots, which is kind of run of the mill mm -hmm, type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that chat GPTs, uh, custom GPTs, uh, the one I had spoke to you about earlier, uh, technical advisor, I yeah. found kind of uh, nice. And uh, for anybody who's paying for chat GPT uh, premium, again, that's like $20 a month. Uh, mm -hmm. They have custom GPTs, and if you go to Explore and then you click on those, uh, we did an AI bite on it recently. Um, they had ones called Tech Advisor, so if you had a problem, I was trying to work through an issue that I was having with Python. Uh, I entered in the prompt, you know, what I was looking for, I copied and pasted the the, uh, the error, and it gave me a list of instructions on how to repair that error. So, um, you know, again, it's a chatbot feature, but that was kind of a neat uh, custom GPT that they had provided. So. There's little, little tweaks like that and are mm -hmm, kind of cool, but, mm -hmm. but nothing yet has really blown me away recently. Yeah, no, I, I would uh, I would totally agree with that. I mean, you know, I think that the two things that have really uh, blown me away recently are stable diffusion. And then I would say uh, the custom GPTs on ChatGPT are like on real, right? Like I've trained about yep. five of them now. Um, I've got one that is on the uh, platform that we that we use at work. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a bunch of I removed any PII, which there really wasn't any, but like that's personal identif uh, identifying information. Uh, yep. But I took the, the code base and these different things that are all public, right? They're all public things. And I basically trained a model, my own GPT to where I could say, hey, I need to upgrade this and this. Uh, how should I do that, right? Like, or um, what what challenges am I gonna run into when I go to upgrade this from this to this, right? Like it's stuff like that. Like 
that's the dream in my opinion right like to have those oh yeah like those those would be questions that you know a 500 dollar an hour consultant would be answering otherwise right so the reality is that you could save just an absolute ton of money on um you know by using these tools right if you've got somebody that knows how to use them right like not everybody knows how to use them so um, I'm I'm very fortunate. Plus, I'm very excited about this. So I, you know, I can kind of do whatever I want. But um, but I understand, right? That it's you know, I think ChatGPT they do OpenAI they do a good job of like making it really accessible. There mm-hmm. are still like little, I'll call them gotchas, right? Or you know, right. like you you created one and you you know you did it but it was kind of like you were just scratching the surface because it was brand new to you right like you would literally right out yep. hours after it came out was that tried it out, uh, right? my fitness tracker pro i think is what it was okay uh, that's where, what it was. where okay, i was yeah okay. i was using it to uh yep. refine exercise and i went back and, and fed it some more information it, it, and you know what? i'm and sorry to to yep. i'm sorry i cut you off the shoulder length work uh, hair worked fine. I just fucked it up oh. and like had should linked hair and hair, shoulder length. Hair. Oh. <laughs> it works just fine. That is what needs to be done. So um, I'll yeah. cut that out. Um, I just want to make a mention quickly, folks, that um, I had a typo and I had like shoulder length hair. That's why in those first couple generations there, we we had like longer hair. Uh, now that I've got this as shoulder length hair, correctly spelled, uh, it's coming out correctly in every single generation. So that's just one thing I wanted to make mention of. And you were talking about uh, when you did the custom GPT, right? Like you were talking about the yeah. uh, My Fitness Pal or, or My Fitness It's My Fitness Tracker Pro. Okay, yeah, that's okay. It. That's, gotcha. what, that's what the name ended up being. And I went back, I think it was like two weeks ago now. Um, you know, I'm not to get into the whole bodybuilding uh, type thing but um there's uh, things called exercise splits that people mm-hmm. do to make sure they hit every area of their body you know when you're trying to build out or you know increase strength whatever mm-hmm. the case may be and in that instance uh i had it refine my work uh my workouts using the you know the text that i had put in there and then asked it to create new splits for me using uh, a few different bodybuilders uh, techniques you know and so it went out on the internet and it uses you know that web pilot and stuff searches that stuff and then it refined the exercises and gave me rep schemes and new splits mm-hmm. uh just to use in the gym so oh um, nice it's one of, one of the cool things you know we talk about training gpts and it's awesome you, you're really building the tool yourself mm-hmm. Um, I will say too that I've noticed using chat GPT over the past few months and uh, you know you can go in two week increments I think back from now and it seems like they tweak a little something I, I don't I don't know what it is they're tweaking there uh, but I will say the outputs have changed over time um, I, I'm not gonna say it's improved it, it, like there are parts of it that are improved but mm-hmm. Um, as far as some of the outlines have had it create historically, they were better, you know, three, four months ago. Okay. So it may not have been faster. You know, the information may have been a little bit different, but as far as the output, uh, when I'm trying to make posts or I'm trying to refine information down, um, I will say I've noticed some changes there. So uh, it, it's exciting because it, it keeps changing. But when you use it every day, like we do, you, mm-hmm. you definitely notice, you know, when the right. Shortcomings of things. right no that it, yeah no you're you're right i do find that like you know remember day one when we first started generating uh with using bing's image generator the first things we generated were whoa oh my gosh like, right, yeah. oh oh we can do anything now rico like we can generate <laughs> anything then except then, except generate fingers <laughs> yeah 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 fingers and it wasn't even just fingers it was getting two guys that look what one look that looks like me and one that looks like you in the same image was impossible uh and i do mean impossible like i tried for days multiple hours hours hours, we tried for hours and hours and hours so ultimately we we created one that looked like me and one that looked like Rico. And yep. Mike took his Photoshop skills that I've been using that program now for 23 years. Yep. And I made a composition that looked great with both of us in it, right? That was the only way that we could really get it done, right? So. And now we've got to revisit that, you know, and now yeah. we're, we're going to have to see uh, stable diffusion with our images. Right, right. And create uh, closer likenesses and uh, see where we end up. Yeah. With it. 
Yeah, you know, ab so. ab absolutely. Um, and, and so that, you know, you could take your, uh, you know, input image of you, uh, you know, as a regular photo of you and cartoonize it, right? Or, you know, make it look like anime or, you know, uh, 2D drawing or elemental art, right? So yep. heroic. Uh, I, <laughs> heroic. I, I think this is the program to, to get this done uh, yep. for free if you have the hardware to run it, right? Yep. I think our marketing manager on staff will probably have a little bit of a fit about us breaking branding, but uh, ah, perhaps she'll give it a look anyway. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe she'll let us uh, toy with our likenesses. Yeah. Lily, your <laughs> fingers are going to burn, girl. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. She's a mage now. This is later I, in the series. I'm, I'm I'm telling you, I am very concerned about the welfare that, of that our one, main uh, character. That's concerning there. Yeah, I don't I don't like this one. We're, um, we're not shooting for that. No, that's yeah, wrong no. direction. And this one, she's right up on the fire, right? Like it would definitely be burning her hair. <laughs> yes. This this one's cool. I li I like that one. I little, do like that one. Yeah. yeah. Very story storybookish. Yep. yep. Just taking a yep. look here to to see if there's any other settings, right? Like that that we could use to make it look more like what we want, right? Right. If you see anything, let me know. Wonder what like pop art two is. I want to try something. I want to try pencil sketch drawing with the stuff we already have and sure. see if it like what I want to do is flatten it more. Right. Like, actually, this one's pretty cool. Right. Or at least the the, the mm -hmm. dimensions in it are good. Right. Like, and, and we're talking about like, yeah, even though she's holding the fire, I kind of like that one, too. Um, but like, you know, like this one, it's like it's modern close, but it's not exactly right. Like that same. That's same art style. So what we've got now is we've got, um, I'm going to take out the fantasy art and keep every, and actually I'm going to take out the Renaissance too. I want to see what well, like these, uh, what I want to get to, you know, honestly, let's just try it with fairy tale and see what happens. Right. Like I'm almost trying to like do something like the old Disney books. Right. Like, and I, I think that was where I was like, but with, but with this kind of like, it's a little more than the Disney books, but you get what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Right. Right. Yeah, I think that's a little, the imagery is a little bit more modern, a little smoother than. OK, this is definitely closer to what I can almost guarantee this will be better, like or closer to what I was. Yes. And I wonder if uh, changing the prompt, uh, it, you know, to to imply more the relationship to the fire, like as far as proximity. We get the precision, <laughs> man. Feet away from a campfire precisely there jim <laughs> okay so hot quick take fairy tale is what i'm kind of looking for like yep her eyes are slightly different i really don't care this is really good no i like, like it yeah that is that is what i'm looking for in my children's book yep that. same yep so i'm glad we did that right i think that like adding too many of them was actually kind of like yeah. washing it out a bit right working, like working they were getting itself. yeah working against itself yeah um, she is not five feet from that campfire, though. Uh, oh, I guess I haven't stopped it and started it again. Yeah, I was so gonna let, say I don't. I don't yep. think that's the case, though. Yep. No, it's one from the previous iteration. Yep. So we'll we'll give we'll give this a try. So we got like one really good one, right? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna save that. Like that's actually in my mind that's good enough to save. Um, even though it's not even high quality, I don't I don't care. I just like that image, right? It's just a really neat thing. And the other thing too, folks, is like as you generate more stuff that you find looks great. So let's say you generate a hundred images and like 13 of them look really good. You use those images as the seed images for the new stuff, right? So you'll refine and really dial in your character at that point, right? She is definitely a few feet away from the fire now, like maybe two feet, but like still, she's not right up on it. This is very cool. This is very cool, man. I'm really excited about this one. I have uh, high hopes for getting this one, just getting this one to work. It definitely generates a lot of ideas. Yes, definitely. And then another thing that you can do is like, let's say you wanted to have a consistent outfit. You can, you can use the, um, you know, use that outfit as an image prompt. It won't be perfect, but like I tried this with a, like a Nirvana t-shirt, like the band Nirvana, right? And mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't do the logo of Nirvana. Like the AI just sucks at like really good, right. like lettering and stuff like that. But it like at least gave me, you know, there's a black shirt with the green, red and whatever, right? Like the colors from the logo and stuff like that. So, or from the album cover. What's going on here? 
It was like Five Nights at Freddy's for a minute there, dude. I thought I was going to get jump scared. <laughs> What's going on over here in this tree? That uh, is the former Smoke, home Smoke. of the Keebler elves before. Oh, my got gosh, there and... dude. Smokey would be so she upset said, right now. She set fire to it. Oh, man. The Keebler elves, like, um, that is, that's dating you, dude. I don't even, do they even make Keebler cookies? They do, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's still a thing. Yeah. That's still okay. Still a thing. I don't but, know if they do I, the commercials anymore. I don't know. The I don't thing watch is TV, the co- so. Yeah, the, I was just going to say, I don't watch TV, so I'm not sure if they still <laughs> do Keebler commercials, but those elves were about as famous as the uh, California grapes. Look that up, kids. Look that up, kids <laughs> who were born after the millennium. I actually, uh, there was uh, no kidding. It was one of the cold Halloweens too. I was dressed as uh, as a California raisin one year. Oh, no I call them California like the grapes. Canvas. How ridiculous! The, yeah, California California raisin. Raisin. the California raisins. Right? It used to be grapes. Okay. <laughs> I heard it through the grapevine. That was always a song, dude. Sixth grade. That was the hot stuff yeah. right there, my boy. Yep. I remember that Halloween. It was like a slip on canvas <laughs> thing. It was like so and you stuck your arms and had little white gloves, you know? Yep. That's California awesome. raisins. Yes. The California grapes. Exactly. Nothing. I think I think we should start a whole other podcast. It's just us like reminiscing over nostalgia, right? Yeah, nostalgia. Yeah, the great the great things from I, I honestly think we could totally do that, right? Like the eighties yep. and nineties. Uh, yeah. I think that I could like anything up to the point where I was like probably like eighteen. Um, yep. I think the, so my entire like childhood and young adulthood, uh, I think I could, I, I could really get into something like that because, uh, you know, I don't want to say like, I'm not one of those people who's like, Oh, it was so much better back then because like there were, there were better things. There were worse things, right? Like, sure, but, I, but, yeah. but you know, what I will say is that, uh, especially I feel like the eighties, like the, you know, the late eighties, like mid to late eighties were a really cool, interesting time, right? Yeah, There's sure a lot was, of things that happened back then. So with music Atari, and Nintendo, yeah, exactly. Yeah, music, MTV, mm-hmm. you know, the, MTV, the rise yep, of MTV yep. from 81 on. Just yep. Epic yeah. hair bands. Yes. <laughs> and Nintendo and Nintendo was pretty huge. The guy on TikTok, I'm going to have to send you, I don't know if you've seen him or not, but he covers okay. n- nostalgic things from the eighties and, um, I think into the 90s even, and mm-hmm. y- you would absolutely go crazy for it because he pinpoints all of these points in, you know, our history of, you know, growing up of like, you know, remember the old Pac-Man uh, arcade thing at Pizza Hut? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Right? And you remember. Yeah. And, and he finds these images online and then he puts himself in those images and he acts out as if he's a child and then he has the parents and it's all the same guy. Uh... But it's like a, a Friday night when you were a kid. And they're sitting down, and it's the type of TV shows that you watch. Dude. And it's the furniture that you, that we used to have, that the same pattern uh-huh. that everybody had for the couch, you know. And yeah, you, you'd love it. Every everybody in the comment section of those is just they love the nostalgia, and it brings back things that we've even forgotten about of growing up. So that's I've so that's fun. so cool. You'd Please do, it. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I'm definitely into that. Uh, I you know I. I still quote a lot of the movies too from from our childhood, right? Like, I mean, it's just like it's one of those things where uh, it's something that it will always be ingrained in me, right? I like movies anyway, yep. and movies, uh, you know, movies from my twenties, from my thirties, right? And uh, and so I'm always quoting one-liners from that. And the cool thing is, the people that I work with, the uh, at least closely work with. They generally do the same thing, so we get we get along very well. So, yeah, I think I think it might be like a like a tech person thing, to be quite honest. Like, <laughs> it could, it's, it's like nerds, bro. Nerds, it's dude, nerds, like, bro. It's one liners just going back constantly, back and forth yep. constantly. Yep. And if there's any children listening, if you're not friends with nerds, be friends with nerds long term. Oh yeah. yeah. You'll figure it out later in life. Nerds where it's at. They're the ones that make make money. They're the ones that are you know good friends to be with. Uh, Intelligent folks, nerds. That's where it's well, at. Thanks, Rico. Thanks. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. you. I'm a closeted nerd, I think. Yeah, I, I know you are. I know you are. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Aaron, my wife, Aaron is like a super nerd and, uh, and you know, like out nerds me all day, every day. <laughs> Maybe doesn't out, it doesn't out geek me. I'm definitely way more geeky. <laughs> like, well, out nerd me like a uh, hundred times over. So She has total recall. So we love that. We both love that movie, yeah. by the way. And yes. Yeah, yeah, just the movie. But, yeah. but I I know. I yeah, know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I still remember I was 12 years old when that came out. And um, my dad's girlfriend had an 18-year-old son. And we watched it or whatever. And then he's like, 
so was it real or was it Memorax? You know, I remember him saying that. Remember Memorax? What's going on on this show, dude? Like, talk about some VHS tapes there. Yeah. This dude, it's like the first time he watched The Matrix, right? The first oh, DVD I ever saw so was good. The Matrix. I was so in uh, AIT in Georgia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this guy, you know, uh, Southern Private, spent all his money on a DVD player in the first DVD, you know, when it first mm-hmm, came out mm-hmm, in 99. Mm-hmm. And he comes into the day room, pops it on, we're watching it, and like, one, you're kind of blown away at the quality of it. Two, you're just like, what is happening in this movie? Dude, the you know, Matrix, like the, from, yeah, from the like first opening the first scene one, of them so good. Hit, hitting the uh, phone booth, where'd the yes, person go? It was, just, yes. it was just confusion. And even after, you know, finishing it, like, I, I think I had to see The Matrix probably three or four times. It's just like, I, I just, I don't understand what's going on. Exactly. Interesting time in history for us. It, you know. it really, really was. A movie on a disc, a small yes. disc, I should say. Not you remember Laser Disc? Disc? Remember not, laser not Laser Disc. disc. I do remember chet this i kind of like this one too this is pretty neat right like she's just chilling her fingers are a little messed up but nobody's gonna notice that it's a kid's book right so yep um we're not gonna we're not gonna judge people by their fingers uh got another fire in the tree dude like like that it it really i'm those keeblers are gonna be very upset with this so Uh, don't start fires in in trees yeah don't start fires (laughs) in trees in (laughs) kids and kids, don't start fires anywhere, please. That's all right. 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 Let your parents start the fire. Um, okay. So here's what we're going to do. So I've generated a few of these. The, these are looking, you know, I'm feeling good about these, right? So what I'm going to do next, I really like this one, but like I, we'd have to, what we do, what we do, just let you know, folks, how you would solve this problem, because this is a problem, is you would use photo to, to, to trim this just like that out of the picture. And then you could use remove BG and remove BG would remove everything probably except for this, this log right here and Lily and this fire. And then you can just like put another forest behind it. Right? Like, I mean, oh. it, like I do that a lot, right? It's, it's layers. We could uh, runway ML infinite background that too, right? Oh, is it, is it background? Infinite background? Yeah. Oh, you know what we could do? Hang on. We, we can actually demonstrate another feature of stable diffusion here my friend so i'm going to download this i'm going to sh- I'm, we're going to what we're going to do here folks is we are going to do something called in painting and what that what we're going to do is we're going to take a picture of this tree then we're going to take the whole picture and then we're going to like go around this tree and i think you might have to just paint the whole thing and we're going to say or maybe we'll just do the fire part right like we just say replace this piece with the tree or whatever right so we're going to try that now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go find that that image that I just downloaded, which is this one. And oh, actually, nope. We got to go over here. We got to go to in paint or out paint. So we're going to go ahead and grab our image. Does uh, Photoshop, doesn't Photoshop have an in paint feature they, to it now? They totally do. They it's totally AI. have yeah, it. Yeah, yep, they so do too. have it. It is AI. Yep, 100%. Uh, and... So here's the deal. Uh, it gives you three options. You know, one of the things about AI is that hands and eyes can be problematic for AI. So um, you, it actually has some presets here with this in paint, where let's say you want to improve the detail of like face, hands, eyes. You can, I can, I could like paint over her eyes right now and paint over her hands, and then use that setting, and it'll fix oh, nice. it. It's like, it's like surprisingly good. We'll, we'll do that if we have time. But what I want to do here is modify content, add objects, change background, et cetera, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And so we need to specifically, so this prompt down here, Rico, is different than this prompt up here. We're gonna leave this exactly the same up here, right? And we're gonna mm-hmm. change this. We're gonna we're gonna do our in painting, which we just use our little thing here. Gonna do that and that, and I think we gotta like actually just paint it and you know in paint the whole thing. Oh, and that's it cool. Yep. It doesn't it doesn't really take that long, you know. I, I wish they and maybe you can make this bigger. I bet you can make the brush bigger, probably right up here. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that right now. This is just having fun in the lab. Because I'm just having fun in the lab. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so with with this, right, like I'm just kind of going over um, the parts of the tree that I want to replace, which is really the getting rid of this fire, right? So um, I'm going to say uh, remove the fire and just have the tree bark. And we're going to give this a quick whirl. So I'm going to hit generate. Um, I'm going to leave it on extreme speed. 
and we'll see what we get here. One quick note, when you stop and start, you know, if you hit start again or generate again, rather, you lose whatever's up here. So save your images first is my point if you want to save them. A lot of the times, um, you know, I want to save maybe one or two of the 10 I've generated, right? So I just, that's just a, a quick heads up. And then Rico, while this is generating, uh, one of the things that uh, that we found that was kind of cool was uh, along with the other stuff that Google's doing, right? What was the thing with, called? It was Music FX or something? Uh, you talk about the audio thing? Yeah, the audio thing. We generated a few different, uh, you know, audio clips. It, yeah, it's right here. It's Music FX. Um, I'm I'm not going to switch over to it right now, but we're, you know we're going to do a little bit on this as well. And uh, so, you know, look forward to that. We'll probably do it as like a small AI bite or even what we call an AI bit where it's just a minute of content, a couple minutes of content, something we get through on TikTok. But uh, we did try that out. One of the things that uh, is a serious limitation in my mind is that it can't generate AI vocals, right? Mm -hmm. um, it can generate the music and I think it's pretty decent at that. Uh, but the limitation is is that you can't generate the vocal stuff. What was the? Uh, do you remember what the service was that you that you used to generate uh, a song with? Or I guess it was me. I did this too. It was you that did that. We, yeah, yeah, we generated we come a little up with rap, earlier. right? Yeah, you know. I'll, and I'll they've changed too. Some of up, those. But, yeah. Some of those seem like they've kind of come and gone. You know, like okay, it, okay. There, there was a bunch of them available at one point, and then right. it seemed like we tried it again later on. I, I, I'm willing to bet, you know, you want to take bets now that um, Hey Gen or uh, or Eleven Labs, I, which one of them is going to beat the other to the punch with that, with, with the singing portion of it. I bet I you mean, Eleven Labs. I mean, I feel like Eleven Labs could do this right now, you know? Yep. Like, I bet because, you the other ones yeah, come out with it first. Yeah. Well, because Hey Gen, I think uh, the AI voices in that are okay. They're not great. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that I believe I saw something recently again. I, I don't remember if this is in my mind or just my I'm in my wishful mind or not, <laughs> uh, which is that Hey Jen allowed the ability. No, it was Pictory. Remember, Pictory had the uh, the really bad AI voices. Yes, we did it. We did an episode and then literally a, a week or two later, they came out with the collaboration with Eleven <laughs> Labs and yep. uh you know, it may have been us, folks. We really don't know. So we haven't um, seen any royalties or uh, commission on that deal, but yeah, I'm pretty exactly. sure we brokered that on the show. Exactly, Pictory. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, we're waiting <laughs> for the check. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there was a. You know, it's funny because I, I can't remember if it's CapCut. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say it was CapCut because I don't think it was a uh, TikTok um, feature, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, CapCut had a. Uh, you could enter that it was. You enter the text, and it mm -hmm. would actually sing the text on your video. So you know how they oh, can wow. do the voiceover stuff. You know, you could type it, and it says, you know, this is me doing whatever. And then right, you know, right. Voice with that. They had one that was actually it would sing it and uh, to different t songs. And oh. yeah, I wonder. I wonder if they've improved that. I haven't heard a bit, but it was interesting anyway to introduce your video and have it sing the words. Yeah, I'm like sure. I was, I was like seriously impressed with CapCut. Like uh, that's probably one of the best little things that I had seen. And oh First no, this isn't going to do what I wanted. Oh no, uh, it moved <laughs> Lily into the tree, which isn't the end of the world. Let's see what we end up here with here. I mean, yeah, it might it might be fine. Uh, <laughs> she made herself a chair now. She burned out the elves. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But but look, look. I mean, well, it's not done generating, so I'll give it some time. But it doesn't like the likeness is not the same as uh, as the right. other ones, right? The hair isn't curly. Yeah, this is a different girl, right? Uh, yeah. And part of that, no, nope, no, nope, I still have everything in there, right? Face swap is still there, um, but like it looks like the the in paint here, like that's that's just so that's different. So different. Oh, oh, that's kind of <laughs> creepy. <laughs> Creeped out. Dude. Dude, this is like that Megan doll or something, right? Like, I, I don't know, man. I'm creeped out. Ooh. Oh, now what's happening? Some little little baby. This or is why we love the lab right here. You never know what's Dude, gonna happen. The lab, the lab. never know what's gonna happen. All right, <laughs> we're we're gonna we're stopping you there. Uh, go home, go home, stability uh, AI. You're drunk. Uh, stable diffusion. <laughs> So, all right, we're gonna we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board here. Um, so we're gonna say uh, tree bark. We're just gonna say tree bark. That's all. 
Tree bark here. Yes, tree bark was here. All right, so extreme speed. I don't want to save that image ever. Even in the even in my brain, I'm trying. I'm already trying to forget that. That was that creepy. Image. Yeah, that was pretty creepy. Yeah, AI. You know, it, it can do some things <laughs> that you know you don't expect it to do, right? Uh, oh, while we're waiting, uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about a little bit more, right, is the ability for. ChatGPT and a lot of these models like Gemini is, is touting this too to do what's called multimodal which what that means is that they can work with text they can work with video they can work with images and they can work with audio right and what what's really cool about that is like with ChatGPT one of the tests that I did recently was I was on social media and I just took a screenshot of like it, it was like something like it wasn't like people I knew or whatever. It was just like uh, a random like influencer in the comments on their thing. And I was like, write a write a, a witty comment to this. It read the whole screenshot. And so the picture that was posted from the influencer and the comments that it could see and made a witty response. And I think I even had in the prompt like uh, make a witty response and include some context from one of the comments. You know, that seems interesting. Sure enough, it did it. What it was, was it was a it was a Call of Duty influencer and um or no, it was Call of Duty specifically. They had posted something. And one of the things that people were saying in the comments, like at least a couple people were, you know, hey, like, yeah, this this is cool that you have like a cosmic skin for this operator. But like, can't we make this more realistic again? You know, like that's not realistic at all. Right. And right. Uh, it's some of the more more purest people. And uh, and so uh, I actually I forgot what the comment was, but I had AI like comment, you know, or ChatGPT like design a comment and it ended up getting like five likes or something. So what that means and, and a lot of the other stuff didn't have any likes. Right. So what that means, it was good enough that it like emulated something human based on the context right. and based on an image. Right. Like it wasn't text. So we're still that's not great. That's not great at all. Well, um, what's, her, what's her name? She could be named tree bark. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, that is, that is really, really weird. Um, it really wants to to draw that tree there. Uh, so let's let's try something. Yeah, no, let's not try something. Yeah, we uh, say that. Yeah. Ultimately, the focus is the character continuity, and we've achieved. Right. Right. We have a but she's creepy too dude dude, <laughs> she's she's, I, the last one. She, she's just as creepy as the last one like that white hair oh, like what, what happened to you like i mean um yeah so anyway uh daily reminders of uh how ai isn't perfect folks like That's right. uh, you know you you can get a lot of really good results and sometimes you just don't get what's expected right in the same breath stable diffusion the the focus uh you know uh model specifically and the web web app that you can install on your computer really cool stuff allows you to generate this stuff for free you don't need mid journey um you know it's better than bing like you can't do continuity in bing at all right, right? It, every time you generate a new image it's just based on text right now and uh and that's a serious limitation right so I will say that ChatGPT, I did some tests with continuity and I was able to get some because again, like multimodal, right? Which means that it can do images. Um, I threw like 15 images in, into a custom GPT, which again, that's something that we've talked about in one of our AI bytes and we've talked about in some of our posts. But if you don't know what a custom, a ChatGPT custom GPT is, this is something that you can tailor to, uh, to your own needs. And it's, it's a really cool feature. I actually built one for the show. Uh, we'll link it. And what you can do is it's trained on like all the transcripts. It's trained on like our website. It's trained on our Buzzsprout, which is what we host our podcasts on and has our RSS feed. So what it can do is quickly search all of our data and you say, gosh, what, where, when did they talk about model collapse? You wouldn't find that easily because we have, right. even with only seven episodes, it'd be hard to find those exact spots where we talked about model collapse. But the uh, custom GPT allows you to uh, get to that pretty easily. So uh, I think that custom GPTs, I know that making them is definitely only part of the plus plan. I'm not sure if using them 
is is part of the free plan or not but um really great stuff so that's something that's been added within the last month i think of uh, open eye maybe, maybe like the last six weeks so that's really good stuff for sure cool uh so rico uh, aside from you know one thing i just want to bring up before we do closing uh thoughts is you know we do have a new lo- newsletter coming out and uh you can subscribe for that on our website there's a you know a quick sign up form just go to antics.tv and you'll see it it's right there there's a pink button that says subscribe uh, you know, put your email address in there, hit subscribe. We're going to be doing this on a weekly basis. So it won't be like a bombarding your email box. And it's really going to be like very heavily curated and yep. aggregated. So it'll be really only the important stuff. So you get, you know, you get rid of some of that FOMO. You could just like take a breath because any news stuff we cover on the show, as well as any news things we do in an AI bite will definitely be in that newsletter. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that and like it, subscribe, you know, one of the thing that things that Rico and I had noticed recently is that we've had a plateau of subscribers. We'd love to get some more subscribers. So tell a friend about the show. If you like what we're doing here, tell, uh, no, tell a friend and, uh, and we're excited to, uh, get your feedback too. So again, it's not just about liking, subscribing, like throw a comment in there. Let us know what you'd like to see next, because everybody has a different take on that. And I do feel like there are subjects that multiple people probably want to hear about. And maybe it's something that Rico and I just haven't thought about. Right. So we, we unfortunately can't read minds. Uh, that's (laughs) something that even with AI, we're, we're not able to directly read minds. So, uh, we, we need a little input and feedback from you folks. So, uh, really great, uh, you know, to have, uh, you know, everybody here and we're looking forward to the next episode with you as well as, you know, providing newsletters and the AI bites, you know, we've got a couple of those coming out soon and excited to, uh, you know, be back in the lab. This was, I think this was definitely a very, uh, experimental episode. We, we (laughs) we ran into some things that even I didn't expect that I've been playing with this for a week, Rico. So, uh, closing thoughts on your end antics, baby. That's it. I would agree. All right. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you back in the lab soon.